What's going on guys? In today's video, we're talking about the DIY trolling motor setup that I put on my Old Town 120 pedal drive kayak this season. A trolling motor I had for 10 years, transom jumbo trolling motor, I converted to fit on this kayak. So stay tuned. I'm going to show everything how I mounted it and how you guys can do one yourself. And uh, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I'll link everything as much as I can, but a lot of it was mix and match of getting stuff to make it work. So I'll go through all of it and then you guys can hopefully use it to do a DIY trolling motor on your kayak as well. All right guys, so first off the motor itself. It is a Minn Kota Maxim. It's a 50 pound thrust, uh, volt reader, battery reader here, uh, till handle, but it is for a transom. It was for a back of a John boat. I had this motor for probably 10 years. We had it on a John boat for a little bit and then we just kept it inside. So it was barely used. And I decided, you know what? I want to mount it to the Old Town pedal drive and try to use it for tournament fishing. So let's get right into how I mounted it. So first up, mounting the motor itself. So right here is actually a Newport Vessels uh, trolling motor mount. So I know it works with, you know, the NK180, but I actually looked up the specs of the shaft the thickness of the shaft of this trolling motor and it actually fit perfectly into the plastic mount here. So I was able to get this mount right off Newport Vessels. I think it was like $115. And then it's spray painted black because I duck hunt out of this kayak. You can see the duck hunting blind there. So it's usually silver. As you can see, the paint's starting to come off here. But so we use the Newport Vessels mounting. And then right here, I actually have my stepdad who was a welder create a mounting plate. So I had it custom made, it's one quarter inch thick um, aluminum. And there's actually, so what happens is there's six bolts. So there's two bolts here, there's two bolts here, and there's two bolts here, as you can see. So actually on the inside of the kayak, as you see here, there's actually, let me move this out of the way, there's actually, I installed this so this was not this does not come on the old town kayaks it is off of amazon it's just a storage thing and this actually pops out and then i can get inside of my kayak the reason that i did this is because on the inside of the kayak there's actually a support plate inside so the front four bolts here not these ones as you can see these are outside of the kayak but the front four are actually through another quarter inch piece of aluminum. So I had it shaped with cardboard to make sure I got the angle around the kayak and then he had it made out and then I made any minor adjustments. So I made this giant hole in here, which was, you know, a five inch hole to make in the kayak, added this Amazon little storage thing, sealed it up, waterproofed it. But I did that so I can get the backing plate up under here. I didn't want the kayak to flex so much with all the force just on the four bolts. So I put a mounting plate underneath. So the front two bolts here don't actually go to the Newport Vessels mount. It actually goes straight through into the kayak just to the backing plate. And then the front two bolts of the Newport Vessels go through the, the motor mount, through this aluminum and through the backing plate. So they're bolted on there as well. And then the back two bolts for this motor mount are just into the sheet metal. So technically there's only these two bolts going through everything, but these two go into the support plate and these two just go into this. But I've used this all season and I had no issues at all. Okay, so before we go into this whole thing, if you're used to an NK180 or have seen it, there's turning cables that you can put on this. You can also put something on this to convert it from, um, so you can use reverse. So I actually have the pedal drive system. So I have instant reverse there. So I don't really worry about it. I want this to kick up when I hit a rock. If I'm fishing the river anywhere, if I hit something, I want it to kick off. So if you wanted it to be able to use reverse, you have to add a pulley system to this. And when you pull that, it allows it, it doesn't kick up and then you could use reverse, but I don't worry about that. And for turning, I have, as you see, the rudder system. So. I already have the rudder system in. This actually deploys. I still use it. And I'm still able to turn left and right while the motor's down. 
once it's down all the way. Sometimes it hits if the motor moves from a rock or whatever, but I mean, 99% of the time it's good. So steering wise, I use the rudder still. I have to cock the motor off to the side so I get more or better steering. So that's generally what I do for steering. I don't worry about steering cables. This is literally just to help me push me from A to B. So next up, you have the motor itself, the shaft. So what I did was I detached the head of the trolling motor transom out, as you can see, and it's up there. So how did I get it there? So first off is the motor itself goes through. This is the actual clamp that is on this trolling motor when it comes with it to help it for height. So what I did was to keep it from moving on its own. So I had these made. Um, my stepdad again is a welder. He made these. It's just a washer, a thick washer with a rod welded to it. So you might ask what this is for. So what I do, because if you don't have, technically this motor can move left or right. But as you can see here, I actually added the washer into this collar and it prevents it from, it, it really takes a lot of force to get it to turn. So usually, you know, unless I hit something, or I go up shallow and it starts hitting rocks, then it might turn a little bit. But other than that, it, it's fine on lakes and everything else. Um, I pull the motor way up. It's pretty high right now, as you can see. This is set up for like river fishing and I can adjust the shaft. It's not manual like I've seen guys do. Um, I have to get out if I wanna make it shorter or longer. So this pin right here goes in that collar and there's actually a hole right here, as you can see, which is actually made for the NK motors. So the hole is already in this plastic piece. As you can see in there, the pin goes right down into that hole. So all I did is I got a bunch of these made. Um, I got like three or four of them made. That's still the very first one. So a whole season didn't break. I had to shorten it up a little bit because the depth into that hole isn't that deep. So I just shortened it up to make it fit. So that keeps it from turning left and right. Like I said, the, co the collar is super tight. So... I have to really force it to try to get it to turn. But it works really good. I just adjust it how I need it. Um, offset a little bit, like I said, for the rudder system so I can turn easier. So that is basically it. Now, before I may, did make a mistake that I should have done is, so what happens is the two wires come out of this trolling motor head, a red and black. So what I did was I added more eight gauge and then it goes all the way to a plug right here. Now I didn't realize, cause I didn't see any guys taking motors off. I thought originally that you had to slide the shaft out every time, which of course is false. I didn't think enough into it. So to un take the motor off every time, all you do is unplug it and you lift this and this whole piece will come out. It's hard to do with one hand and that's a pain to get back in sometimes, um, with, especially with one hand. So you just tighten that up. So realistically, when you're looking at this, this should have a 90 on it. Um, I put some uh, putty in here and uh, made it waterproof, but really there should be a 90 on here with a PVC or, of some sort to keep the moisture out. But I've, I put some other stuff in there to keep it waterproof. But um, yeah, cause originally, like I said, I didn't realize you can just keep it mounted like that. Um, as well as I just used a clamp here and a nut, a washer. I keep an extra one and then it's got clip and then a pulley system and that's how to raise and lower it so like i said i extended the wires here extended a couple feet and then it goes to a plug i know this isn't the best plug i know a lot of guys burn these plugs out but honestly it's gotten warm but it's still perfectly fine i didn't burn it out yet um i probably should have upgraded to a better plug uh, i know the guys that run the xi3s and stuff have uh burnt them out so all i did was add the female plug in here and then it goes through the kayak so once the plug goes through the kayak i extended some wires and then all this is if you can see here is just a collar it is for piping but there is an actual like one inch hole in my kayak so the reason that is is the wires actually come up through here and up through this hole through the hole there into the head of the trolling motor and reconnect. So if I ever want to remove it, I have to unscrew that hook and I can lay the head down. But I honestly travel it like this the whole time. That screw holds it in. 
I've put thousands of miles on it, no issues. So as you see there, that's just all my extra wire and then my battery connection. So my battery, lithium battery goes right there. And yeah, so that's how all the power gets to it. Um, I mounted it there, so it's right by my seat. I can easily adjust it. Um, like I said, I still have the pedal drive, so I don't need to worry about reverse. Um, it's mainly just to get me A to B, and then I use the pedal drive once I get there. So for raising and lowering the motor, I actually use one of these Yak Attack Mighty Mounts. And as you see here, I was able to get one mounted here. You gotta stick your hand way up underneath and it's kind of a pain, but so right here I mounted a ball and then right up here next to my paddle and rod holder, I have a pulley system. This was actually a new canoe um, raising and lowering system that my dad didn't use. Um, he ended up getting an XI3. So I'm sure it could be any kind of pulley system, but all it is is I have a handle tied on to this pulley here and then I just pull it all the way back and then put it right there on the ball there like that. And that's it. When I want to deploy it, that's deployed. And when I pull it all the way up, it's pretty much 95% or more out of the water. So that's all I do when I get to shore. But it runs all the way from up here, down along. I added an eyelet here. And then through this pulley system, and down on the carabiner right here. So to, un, when I take it off, I literally just take this off and I attach this pulley system here right to this clip, pull it tight, and it honestly will sit on that ball and it won't move at all during travel. So when I go to put the motor on, it's put it in there, plug it in, uh, unhook the rope, and then hook this pulley right here up to this and then pull the rope back and I can hoist it right up and that's it. So super DIY, not your typical um, trolling motor, but again, it was a motor I already had for, you know, eight years and it only took $200 probably. And now I have a motor on the kayak. Um, I don't get a ton of speed out of it. I'm a bigger dude. The kayak is way loaded down, but I get about three miles an hour, three and a half all depending, but it helps like river fishing. It's super nice. Um, kind of like a torpedo style motor. You can make it really shallow like it is now. I can run in like a foot and a half water easily. Um, I run a hundred lithium Z pro battery. I also have a 50 amp hour. So on big runs, big lakes, big tournaments, I'll take both of them with me. Um, I definitely think it drains a little bit more power than usual just because it's an older motor compared to the new ones so i'd be curious to what a newer transom motor runs like um how much power it draws but i get about 20 miles i'd say give or take with um both batteries probably a little more than that so all the small lakes fishing other than that unless you're on like really big lakes i bring both of the river if i'm doing a single launch Alrighty guys, there you have it. If you have a transom trolling motor and you want to mount it to your kayak, hopefully that helps a little DIY action. I'll try to link everything I can down below. If you have any other questions, you want more pictures, um, reach out to me on Instagram, Jake underscore stem underscore fishing. I can help you guys out. Link as much as I can down below. As you saw though, a lot of it was DIY made, but hey, it worked out really good. Um, awesome. I use this for over 10 tournaments, put hundreds of miles on that motor for sure and it helped me it's not super fast maybe if a lighter guy was in there i'm a little bit of a big guy but uh you know i know this model old town topwater 120 may not um, go through the water as good like a predator model i know cuts through way better so maybe you get even more speed out of that one but for this one like i said three three and a half miles an hour and i love it i love it on the rivers the lakes and it does everything it needs to and it was way cheaper than going out and buying another motor when i could use one i already had so hope you enjoyed the episode if you have any questions comment down below subscribe appreciate all the support and we'll see you on the next one